Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing to know that he can use us as he equips us. That Jesus Christ can use us as he equips us. That he is the one that will equip us for the usage in his kingdom. Now that's a powerful, powerful, powerful revelation for you and I. What a powerful, powerful revelation. Well, we want to welcome all of our covenant keepers, all of our covenant seekers, all of our Ark of the Covenant Ministry 2 family, all of those that seeking the man Christ Jesus. We want to welcome you all here today at the Ark of the Covenant Ministry number 2 story time. And story time is just simply a biblically based original story that shows godly principles lived out in someone's life. And we want you to know that we do this to edify the body of Christ. We do this to multiply the kingdom of God. We do this to encourage, to lift up, to guide, and to show. We do this because God has called us to this ministry, and we are so grateful for it. And we want you to be a part of the ministry. We want you to be a part of the Covenant Seekers family. We want you to go to our YouTube channel at the ARK, A-R-K, of O-L, the, T-H-E, Covenant, C-O-V-E-N-A-N-T, Ministry, M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y, the number two, and you will see our symbol right here. It says, being an instrument used by God to reach those that cannot reach up. And we want you to go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Share, share the videos. There's all types of videos there. We got Bible studies. We got Sunday morning worship. We got mental and physical workout. We got a collaboration there with me and my wife doing prayer and story time. Listen, we we even got our Christmas songs there. And if y'all encourage us enough, we'll do something this year. Listen, leave us a comment as well as we want you to uh, leave, tell us which ones that you like. Let us know how they affect your life. What principles that they have magnified in your life. Listen, let us know who you share them with and how did it help them. As well as hit that notification bell so you'll know when the next video is uploaded, all right? Well, we so grateful. I'm going to take me a little swig of water here. I should have had it already, but I got it now. All right. So sit back and relax. Get your water or your coffee or your tea or your little soda pop. Set the kids down and all around. Set your neighbors down and all around. And sit back and welcome to the Ark of the Covenant Ministry number two story time. And this one is entitled, He Used What He Gave, But I Didn't Know It. He Used What He Gave, But I Didn't Know It. This is a story about a young lady. Now, the young lady has no special features. The young lady has no uh, fantastic story. The young lady has no uh, different tale than any other young lady that lived in, in this world. She was a young lady born to a loving mother, and the mother loved her all oh, preciously. She was mother's little angel. And she was daddy's apple in his eye. 
her mother and father uh, ended up getting married. After a while, after she was born, they, they got married and they loved this little girl. I mean, they adored this little girl. And she was the only child that they had, so they poured a lot of love into the little girl. They poured a lot of themselves into the little girl. They poured into this little girl all the time. Now, her name was Tasha. Now, Tasha didn't didn't really do much. She wasn't a child that was much trouble at all. She didn't cause a lot of ripples or anything. She was a child that was just a normal kid growing up. Natasha, she had friends from the time that she was able to walk. You see, she was part of a group that her mother was a part of, and it was a women's group that they did uh, readings. It was a book club and all the women would bring their children to the book club that had daughters. They would bring their daughters to the club and they would sit around and they would pick out different books and they would discuss it with one another and look for the metaphors and, and all of this type of stuff in this club. And she was part of the club. Her mama brought her when she was in the stroller, just bringing her to this club. And it was a, a club with about 50 women in there. And they had small groups and things like that. They had their small groups, had books that they would be reading. And the whole club would be reading a particular book. So they had a a, a real nice time with this club. Sometimes they would go to each other's houses. Uh, they would rent out different places. They would and have different events for other women to be empowered uh, through teaching the young people about reading a book, uh, how m much fun it is to sit down and read and all of this. And she was a part of this club. And there was a lot of little kids in the club, little girls. And she grew up in this club. Now, her father, he was a welder and he you know, he would, every day he come home, the first thing he would holler, where's my apple? Where is my apple? And Tasha come on running. I mean, she'll come on running to run and jump up. She just run and just jump because she knew daddy was going to catch her. And daddy would catch her and hold her and hug her and kiss her and say, there's my apple. There is my apple. Oh, they had a loving and beautiful household and it was interesting as she began to develop because as she began to develop she was not the type of child that wanted all the attention she was not the type of child that 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 wanted those to be focused on her she became very reclusive unto herself she became very withdrawn to herself you know she became very secretive unto herself now she didn't change much with her mother and father when she was in the house and wasn't nobody there but them too she was able to un talk. She was able to express herself. She was able to show herself in that particular environment. But outside of that environment, she was very quiet. She was very withdrawn from people. She didn't say much. She didn't talk much. She didn't engage with people much. It took some doing for you to get her to talk to you. It took some doing for you to get in and with her. It took some doing for you to be able to even understand who she was uh, because she didn't give out no information. She didn't talk much. She wasn't comfortable around other people outside of the household. Even when they start taking her 
to the group as she got older, she would be away from the rest of the children. She would be away and she would have her own little book or have when she was little, she had her own little play area because she really didn't socialize that much with the kids. Her mama noticed it when she was little that she would always get away from the kids after she turned about four or five years old. She would get on away into a corner somewhere all by herself while all the other kids were playing together, playing dollhouse and tea parties and all that. She would get all the way over away from everybody. Sometimes she would get her a book. Sometimes she would have her a dial that she would play with by herself. But she stayed away from all the other children. You know, her father even talked to her mother about it and wondered, was everything all right? Did they need to take her to the doctor or something? Was something troubling his apple was there a problem that was developing in his apple that he need to address with it everything all right you know her mama even thought about it and she wondered should she take her because she didn't understand you know exactly what was going on with her with her baby girl she didn't understand what was going on with her princess she couldn't actually describe how she had begun to develop and turn away from everyone. As she got old enough to enter into uh, elementary school and uh, as she got into the fifth and sixth grade, she had a few friends. You see, she had some that made it their business to be friends with her because technically she was a nice young lady. You know, she didn't yell. She didn't cause trouble in the classroom. She was a pretty smart young lady, and she didn't go around bothering people. She didn't talk about the other kids. She wasn't in the midst of all of the trouble that was going on in the school. She was always off to herself, by herself, and she had got adapted to reading for herself. You know, she would always had a book of something that she was reading out of, and that drew her some friends. You know, she had some friends that would like to be around her, but she had the type of friends that would talk all the time. They would just talk, 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 and that was perfect for her because she didn't want to talk. She just listened and let them talk. Oh, they would tell her all type of stuff, all things that was going on in their household, all things that was going on in, uh, in their neighborhood. They would tell her about the things that they were been doing and all this type of stuff and who was doing what in the school and what was going on over here with these people over here. What Tell them about other people's business and stuff. And she she would just sit there and not say a word. You know, she had three young friends. And these three young friends of hers, they just talk, talk, talk. They like a radio, they never stopped. And she just sat there and listened. As she would be looking at her book sometime, reading her book as they talk, talk, talk. They would meet, you know, on lunch hour and go into the lunch room and they would all get back there in the back because if they wanted to be around her, they had to go all the way to the back table and all the way in the corners where she would sit away from everybody and they would go back there and that became their spot back there. And everybody knew that when they got back there because it was a lot of talking and a lot of giggling going on because there was always something to talk about. You know, as she entered into junior high, she didn't change much at all. She was the same way in junior high. She didn't talk much. She didn't get engaged in all of the stuff that was going on in junior high. She didn't have a lot of people that was able to talk about her because they didn't know nothing about her. She wasn't involved in all of the putting down on people or causing trouble with the teachers. She wasn't involved in none of the school activities or none of that. And for a while, she did have her mind set 
on the drama club that they had doing the school plays and stuff. But soon that quickly left her mind. She just continued to do as she normally do, get her little book and sit around and get to herself. But you know those three friends went to that same school with her. So you know they had something to talk about. They always sat and talked to her. They always had somebody to tell something about. They always had something going on in the neighborhood, something going on with somebody else. It was always some type of conflict or something going on that they wanted her to know about. And she never said a word. She was a, a very sweet young girl in her neighborhood. People would see her and she maybe come out and go down to the little corner store or something. They would see her uh, with her three friends and they would come by her house and she would be sitting out on the porch with them or something. Or sometimes they would all walk down to the store together and all this here. Sometimes some of the young boys in the neighborhood be trying to talk to her friends and stuff but she just kept on walking. She she, you know, she wasn't involved in that situation either. She was just quiet and withdrawn. You know, by the time she got in high school, her mother and father had been introduced to the man Christ Jesus. You know, they fell in love with God and they found them a church that they could go to and they began to change their lives. They began to walk in the ways of Jesus Christ. They began to let go old patterns, old situations. They began to let go old weights and old sin and began to grab hold to the principles of God, began to grab hold to the ways of the man Christ Jesus. They began to grab hold to the producing of the body of Christ as they were finding their place in the Lord. You know, she even, when she got in the 10th grade, she, that summer, she had even prayed unto the Lord to help save her to help her understand who she was. She had cried out to the Lord that she was a sinner and she needed a savior and she believed that Jesus Christ was the savior and king of kings and lord of lords. But you know, she was still doing the same old thing. She would come to the church with her mother and father every Sunday. Sometimes they would go on Wednesday. They also had a little thing on Friday that they would do at the church, a little prayer service and thing. Some Fridays, they, they mother and father, and, and she would go with them, and she would always sit in the same place in the back of the church, in the far corner of the church, and she would never say a word. She would never engage in much conversation with anyone. She never would engage with the children that was going to the church. She was just as quiet as she could be. She was withdrawn from everyone. You know, even her mother and father had talked to the pastor about it. And they were wondering if there was something wrong with their child. They was wondering because they didn't take her to go get her checked out when she was little. And they feared that the problem had progressed so much that there was going to be some difficulties for her for their child. They believe maybe their child was uh, has a disability, mental disability problem. But their child was a straight B student in school. They couldn't grasp the reality why she wouldn't talk to people. She, she, they couldn't understand why she wouldn't engage. They couldn't understand what is going to happen to their child if things don't change. The pastor just held both of their hands and began to pray. And the pastor told them, just keep praying for, the, for your daughter. Just keep praying. You know, they, she was in that church for approximately two years. By the time she turned to junior in high school, she was still the same way, but there was one unique difference. 
You see, when she became a junior in high school, while she was at the church one Friday night, here come a young lady through the door with her mother and father, and this young lady come through the door, and she looked around and stood at the door and looked, and the only person that it looked like she saw in the whole church was Tasha. She went straight over there and sat down beside Tasha. Her mother and father even called her and said, come on up here. She said, no, I'm going to sit back here. Now, she wasn't as old as Tasha. She was a, 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 a few years younger than Tasha. You see, Tasha was, in, was on her way to the 11th grade, and this young lady was on her way to the 7th grade. But she wanted to sit by Tasha. So she said, she told the young lady, uh, 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 my name, Tasha. She said, my name is Carolyn. She said, Tasha, how you doing? She just looked at her and Tasha nodded. So they sat there together as they was in the prayer service together, people praying and the pastor praying and her mother and father is praying and even the young lady that sat beside her. She got up and prayed. Tasha was impressed that the young lady prayed. Then after the service, after always on prayer night, uh, prayer service, in the basement they have cookies and donuts and Kool-Aid and coffee and water. And they usually gather for a little while and sit and talk to uh, everybody there. And, and they just talk and just fellowship with one another. So Tasha goes down there with her mother and father. Oh, Carolyn, go down there too with her mother and father. And Tasha get her donut and some Kool-Aid, and she go find her corner to go sit in. Pretty soon, here come Carolyn. Carolyn come and set a cup down and got up in the chair, and then she got a donut, and she looked over at Tasha and asked Tasha, what you do here? Tasha just looked at this little girl and she said, well, there's not much that I do. Tasha said, "Is uh, I just stay away. I just sit and just watch and just come to church. Old Carolyn looked at her and said, why you don't do nothing? Old Tasha was a little nervous about that question. She said, well, I, I I don't think there's nothing I can do here. Now, old Carolyn didn't accept that answer too well. She said, what you mean? Old Tasha said, well, it's not a lot that I'm able to function with. It's not a lot that uh, I do. I don't really like to be around a lot of people or talk to a lot of people or nothing like that. Then old Carolyn stopped her right then and there. She said, but what you going to do for God? She said, well, I, I'm doing it. I come to church and uh, I don't, I, I try not to do anything wrong and I, I pray at home and stuff like that. She, old Carolyn just sat there. She ate her donut for a little bit. She said, you know, my grandmama said, going to church and praying and trying not to do nothing wrong is what you're doing for you. She told me, she said, we have to figure out what we're going to do for God. Now, Tasha didn't say a word, but she heard every word that Luke Carolyn said. Luke Carolyn just kept on eating up donut and got a little Kool-Aid and she drank that and she got up and her mother and father was calling her and she turned around and she said, you know, we got to figure out what we going to do right here. And she walked on the way. Now, you know, Tasha went home and she, like she normally do, she go home and she go and do the things that she gonna do in the afternoon, and then she go sit over there with her daddy as as he finds something to watch on TV where they can laugh and giggle and all this here stuff. And she looked up at her father and said a you interesting thing to her father. She said, "Daddy, 
what am I supposed to do? Now her father being puzzled because she had never even gave an inkling about uh, a topic that she was talking about. She never said, you know, what is exactly. Uh, uh, he, he was a little puzzled, so he took the remote on the TV and put it on mute, and he looked at his baby girl, the apple of his eye. He said, uh, what do you mean? She said, what am I supposed to do for God? Her father looked at her and said, what is God leading you to do? She said, I, uh, going to church, uh, she said, I, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, that's why I'm asking, Father. Her father looked at her with compassion in his eyes and understanding in his heart. And he told his apple of his eye, he said, baby, ask God about it. She smiled and, and just looked at her father and she sat there and looked toward the TV. The father picked up the remote and hit the mute button again and the TV went to talking and playing. She sat there and watched that TV with her father for about an hour. And then she looked up at her father and she said, what exactly do I suppose to ask the Lord? Her father hit the mute button on the TV again and looked down at the apple of his eye with a smile on his face. He said, ask the Lord what you can do for him. She looked at her father and she said, Father, well, I don't have any talent. I don't have anything that I know that I'm special in. She said, I don't know if I got any gifts or anything. She said, well, what am I supposed to ask him about the direction I should go in? She looked at her father, and as her father looked down at her with compassion in her eyes, in his eyes, he said, all you have to do is talk to God about it. So she went on down and to her room, and she sat there for a while, and she got herself together for bed, and she went over there and grabbed her Bible. And she read a few verses in her Bible. And when she got to a unique part, it kind of hit her. She said that the Bible says that we need to go. She read the other part of it. But this particular part of the Great Commission hit her hard when it said to go. She laid the Bible down and she prayed unto the Lord. She said, Father, where do you want me to go? Where is it that you're calling me? She went on to school and she was the same way that next day. She just sat there and, and uh, like her friends come, they always come around her. And they just talking and talking and talking. And she just sitting there. And she got a book and she listening to them talk and tell about this and tell about that and what's going on in the neighborhood and what's going to happen over here. And then somebody said a unique thing that hit her. They said that they was going to close down the local nursing home that was not too far from where she lived. That they was going to close it down. The, person, the man that bought it was going to put a big old club there, nightclub there or something and she when she heard them say this 
that they were talking about the club because the club gonna be catering to young people. The club gonna have a young atmosphere about it. It's gonna be all kind of lights and all kind of stuff going on in there. She looked at the young lady that was talking about this and she looked with, the, with intenseness to the young lady that she was talking and she said, well, what they gonna do with the people that's there? Oh, she said, I don't know. I guess they'll go someplace. They'll find someplace for them. So she, it hit her kind of hard and she went on to a classroom, but she couldn't get these people out of her mind. When she got home, as always, her mother was there to greet her at home and give her a hug and a kiss and she went on to her room, put her stuff down and, and began to do her homework. It wasn't too long after that she could hear, where's my apple? Where's my apple? And then she go over to her father and hug her father. Her mama had got dinner all ready and they got got themselves together and they having dinner together and why? they were sitting there, she looked and she said, you all know that nursing home that's a few blocks over? Her father said, oh yeah, 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 yeah. She, he, she said, you know they're about to sell that nursing home and they're going to put a nightclub over there and they're going to have all kind of stuff catering to young people. Her father said, I didn't know that. He, she said, well, what's going to happen to them people that's been living there for all this time? She said, well, I guess they will find another place for them to go. She said, hmm. The little girl said, well, I want to call over there and find out and see it see what the people going to be doing. So after dinner, her mother found the number four and she called. She explained to them who she was, that she was a high school student, and she heard about they're going to be selling that place. And she said, what's going to happen to the people? Now, the lady that she talked to was a lady full of compassion for the people that was there, because they had been living there for years. She said, well, I don't know exactly they're going to find other places for them to live uh, where they have to start fresh at a new place. She said, well, why don't nobody stand up for these people? Why don't nobody help these people? She said. Now, her mother and father was amazed that she was talking, and she was talking with compassion and conviction in her heart. And they began to listen to her. She, she began to talk to this woman, and this woman said, well, there's nobody in the community that's standing up. There's nobody in the community that's contesting this buying, and all of this here, and pretty soon, that young lady was on fire. She said, well, I, what do it needs to be done? What do I need to do? She said, you probably need to get a petition started. You might need to make some councilman meetings. You, you, you might need to knock on some doors and let the people know what's going on. Let, find out if the people want this in their neighborhood, the club that it was going to be. If they want to keep the nursing home. She said, you have to get active in your community and, and get this started the ball rolling. She hung up that phone and the next day this was a different child. You see the next day she had went to school and she went and talked to the librarian and the librarian told her what books she needed to learn, the information that she needed to learn. And then she had a councilman that was a school teacher. <laughs> And she went and talked to him and he got excited about the pro program that she was talking about doing against the company that's going to buy this place out. And this young lady began to get on fire. Now, a few Sundays went by and she had a and uh, told the pastor about it and all this here. And a few more Sundays went by. He done announced it in the church what she was doing. She had a petition going around and all of this here stuff. Now, a couple of more Fridays done went by. And pretty soon, one day she was sitting there and up popped through the door came Carolyn again. Now, old Carolyn come on over and they... 
I said, oh, Carolyn down. Oh, Carolyn sat there and she was talking to her and Karen O. And Carolyn was talking to her, asking her how she doing, what she been doing. And she just looked at Carolyn and she told Carolyn why I've been trying to fight for the nursing home. Oh, she said, a nursing home, huh? And she, uh. Carolyn began to listen as she told her what she was all doing and all this and stuff. And Carolyn didn't say a word. She just listened. She said, that's a good thing. She said, you know, I think you found what God is sending you. She just looked at Carolyn and didn't know what to say. You know, after a while, the, you know, the service was over. They went on downstairs. They had their donuts and their coffee and all that down there. The mm -hmm. two little girls sat over there in the corner, talked, and they, they got ready to depart. They told each other about And she got her phone number this time. Right. And then, you know, she would call Carolyn every now and then, but sometimes she couldn't talk to Carolyn. Sometimes she couldn't reach the family. She didn't understand why, but she knows that she would call every periodically because they wouldn't show up in church on a regular okay. basis. They wouldn't be there all the time. But this young girl was on fire as she began to mm -hmm. unite her community. She got a petition all signed up with over a thousand names on it. She went to the council meeting and she spoke at the council about the young about the elderly people. She went and met with some of the elderly people as she met with that young lady that she talked to on the telephone. And she went around and met some of them and their family members and all that. And she was fighting for them to stay where they are. The young lady told her that she had a knack and a gift for the elderly because the elderly responded to her very well. The young lady kept on doing what she was doing, and she kept on tending to what she was doing. And then pretty soon, she come there one day, and she happened to go and sit there talking with the young lady. And she was going down the hallway, and guess who she saw? She saw old Carol sitting in the room. And Carolyn saw her and ran to her, and they were talking and laughing and giggling, and she asked Carolyn, who in that room? Carolyn told her that was her mother in that room. She said, your mama in a nursing home? She said, yes. She said, my mama got a very critical mm -hmm. ailment, and she said she passed it along. She looked at Carolyn and said, who she passed it along to? She said she passed it along to me. Oh, Carolyn looked it off a healthy tour. Oh, Carolyn was off a smiley. Oh, Carolyn was off a cheerful. But she couldn't understand. And she went into the room and saw her mother frail. Saw her mother in so much agony in her face. She saw her mother in in a right. way that she had never seen her before because when she saw her before she was standing up she was walking and talking but now it was this oh Carolyn took her by the hand and her and Tasha went up and held her mother's hand and they prayed together for her mother oh Carolyn told her that you know they doing all they can for her and right now she said that she go and have these infusions done uh, three times a week she have different other treatments done that she been doing she said that's why we can't come to church on a regular basis uh, because a lot of days I'm very weak and I'm very ill she looked at Carolyn and said then why did you tell me that we were going to do something? She said, I don't know why I said that we was going to do something. But I, she said, I just know that God put it in my heart to say such a thing. She said, you know, I heard about you and your efforts in keeping this nursing home here. She said, you know, we went to a lot of different places that wouldn't even accept my mother. But this place was. She said, I'm so grateful that you're doing what you're doing, and I'm so thankful that you're doing what you're doing. And all of a sudden, it seems like Tasha had an idea. 
Tasha said, well, listen, can I use your mother? I want to ask your mother, can I use her for a, a spokesperson? Can I use her for uh, the situation that is at hand? Can I use her? She said, yes. Yeah. She went in there and she asked her mama. Mama said yes. She was grateful. Her husband said yes. So, but she did. She took a picture as they set her up and did her hair and got it. She took a picture of her and the family and she took a recording of them as they told her about the trials and tribulations that her mother was going through. And the only place that was accept her was right here. On her way out, she even saw the doctor coming in as she was going out. And they be that she went on out and she got mm -hmm. busy with that with that picture and, and with that recording. Mm -hmm. She took it to the councilman. She took it everywhere to the community. She even had that young girl, Carolyn, and her father at the, t the local mm -hmm. TV station. And they were telling their stories. And all of a sudden, the whole community got behind them <coughs> about that nursing home. You know, they... they couldn't even sell that nursing home. They had to leave it alone. At the same time, there was a man that saw that interview. There was a man, he listened as they told him about their mother and the condition that they were. It didn't take but a couple of days and that man showed up at that nursing home, you see. You see, this man was a, a bio doctor. He was, he was a doctor of great renown. He was a doctor of great learning. And he came in and he began to speak with the family and told them that he's been looking for a person just like them. You see, because the disease was a very rare disease. And then he had two at the same time. He had her mother and he had the little girl Karen. That doctor performed a few tests. That doctor performed a few things as his team moved in on them. And they began a treatment that started reversing the effects upon her mother. Pretty soon her mother was up and out of that nursing home. Pretty soon her daughter wouldn't take in as many effusions and many different treatments. They had a way to stabilize the situation and circumstance and gave the expansion of life. But the little girl Carolyn told Tasha, we never could have done it without you going. We never could have done it without you. She's Carolyn with tears in her eyes. She, she said, I didn't know. She said, I didn't know what I could do. She said, I didn't know how to do. She looked at her. Oh, old Carolyn looked at her and told her, well, it's not what you knew. It's what he knew. But all you had to do was go. The little girl reached down and held old Carolyn close to her. And you know, she grew up, went on to college, got her counseling degree, and began to counsel in, in generic counseling. Counseling with the elderly. She began to counsel with their families. He began to counsel doing social work, counseling with social workers to make sure that all the needs and things was met. She started a fantastic foundation that that was geared to those in the elderly situations, oh, those right. that's in that particular realm that she had all type of different people involved in these this program that she had designed that gave the fullness of life to the elderly. Oh, she was so grateful. They had her at that church, you know, that she was going to. This is after she done got married, even got a daughter of own. The daughter just now going to elementary school. And they had her up there, and they wanted her to say a few words and, you know, tell them about the program and all this here. 
and she began to talk and she began to tell him about the program and all this here and what she doing and how she doing and all of a sudden there was a hand that went up in the air. She looked and she looked back there it was her own daughter with a hand up in the air. She said, why did you name it what you named it? She looked at her baby girl and everybody looked at her and old, old Tasha said, well, the Lord told me to go. So I named it Go because I want them all to know that God can still use if we just go. I wanted the elderly to know that God can use them if they're willing to go. If they can go with their footsteps, if they can go in their phone calls, if they can go with their hands, if they can go in their minds, that God is still calling them to go. Everybody just smiled. Afterwards, they had their gathering session in the basement. All of a sudden, guess who came in? Old Carolyn, her husband, even her daughter. And as she walked in, she hollered, I'm gone, I'm gone. <laughs> this is our story today. Oh, we're so grateful and so thankful that you all were here with us today. We're so grateful that you all was here listening to the story. And we just want you to know that we want you to share the story. Share it with family and friends and loved ones. Share it with those that's going through trials and tribulations. Share it with your neighbors, those you're witnessing to, those that you're praying for. Share, share, share the stories. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at the ark a r k of o f the t a g covenant c o v e n a n t ministry m i n i s t r y the number two and you'll see our symbol that says being an instrument used by God to reach those that cannot reach up and we want you to go through the videos there's all types of them there. Listen, just leave us a comment. Let us know what the story has brought up in you. Listen, let us know the principles that you recognize in the story. Let us know the principles and, and laws that was illuminated in your life. Let us know how you can use the story and who you're going to send it to. And then come back and tell us. What did the story do for that person, all right? And hit the subscribe button, hit that notification button so you'll know when the next video is uploaded, all right? But it was wonderful to see you all. We want to pray for all of you all today because maybe there's someone here that felt the tug at their heart, God calling them to come. Maybe it's someone here that's been in a rut. Maybe it's someone here that's just been sitting down and just been afraid and didn't feel they had anything that God wanted. Maybe it's someone here that's feel that they're so far down in the pit that God don't want them, that they done done so much that God couldn't use them. Listen, maybe there's someone here that then turned away from God and has backslidden. Listen, the Bible tells us that we can get this thing straight, that we can repent, that we can turn from our ways and turn to the ways of the man Christ Jesus. The Bible tells us if we believe, if we can believe and take it by faith, and we can just hold on to the belief of who the man Christ Jesus is. If we can hold on to the word of God, understanding that in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. If we can believe it in our hearts that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin and he lived on this earth and he died on the cross, not only for your sins, but for my sins as well. And the Bible tells us that he provided the way, that he was the perfect sacrifice, that he 
took the penalty for you and I that they beat him till he was unrecognizable as a man. They whipped him and tore the skin off his body. They spit upon him and jammed thorns upon his head. They mocked him and disfigured him and he carried the cross up a hill called Golgotha and they nailed him to the cross and raised him high. They did this at the heat did this for you and for I and he died upon that cross and before he died he cried out it is finished and he was taken down and he was put into a borrowed tomb and three days later he rose again if you can believe it if you can take it by faith and the Bible tells us that he's sitting in heaven at the right hand of the father making prayers for you and I waiting for his triumphant return and if you can take it by faith and Turn from your ways and turn to the ways of the man Christ Jesus and cry out unto him, Lord, forgive me. I am a sinner and I know I have sinned against you, Almighty. And Jesus Christ, I know that you are the Savior. I know that you are the Christ. I know that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. And all things is put underneath your feet. Lord, I surrender all unto you. Father God, forgive me and save my soul, Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Then I want you to get you a Bible. If you can't afford a Bible, listen, go to the nearest resale shop or knock on the nearest church door and tell them you want a Bible. And then pray unto the Lord and ask the Lord where you want me to go. Send me, Lord, to the to a sin-hating Bible-preaching church. And when you get there, I want you to make a public confession of your salvation. I want you to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then I want you to fall on your knees and ask the Lord, where do you want me to go? Where is it that you want me, Lord? And watch the Lord lead you to the place that he needs you. And what a powerful thing. Father God, we thankful. We so grateful that you are Lord of Lord and King of Kings. And Lord, we praying for all of the fullness thereof in this world, Lord. We praying that the whole universe sets in the span of your hand, Lord. And Lord, we know that you even know the minute things of the hairs that fall from my head and every sparrow that falls from the sky. So Father God, we lay it all at your feet. We surrender all that we are. Lord, we we ready, Lord, to be your witnesses, Lord. We praying for your shaping and molding, your teaching and training with your Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. Lord, we praying, Lord, for the strength to pick up our cross and follow you. And Father God, as we lay our petitions down before you, Lord, we know that you're able. So Father God, we thank you. We gonna thank you for the healing. We gonna thank you for the provisions. We gonna thank you for the peace. We're going to thank you for the comfort. We're going to thank you for the protection. We're going to thank you for the solid rock. We're going to thank you for the uplifting. We're going to thank you for the strength that you've given us. Lord, we're going to thank you for the understanding that you laid upon us. Lord, we're going to thank you for the wisdom that you released from heaven. Lord, we're going to thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, remember... That Jesus loves you and so do we. Bye-bye now.